What is up everybody here on YouTube? I appreciate all of your support and uh, your comments on my last video. Um, so, as I promised, because the uh, gameplay footage did not process on my last video, I said I was going to go ahead and put all of that on a separate video. So that is what this video today is for. Um, you saw the last video where I showed the performance, like, well not the performance, but the aspects of the laptop, the physical features, what it has inside. This video is strictly for gameplay performance. I saw some requests for Battlefield 5 and um, kind of what the um, screen looked like when you're watching things like Netflix or Hulu or something. That will be coming in this video um, as well near the end, but the main portion of this video is going to be for gaming performance. So um, you're also going to see that I'm going to have um, the default mode selected at first. Then I'm going to change it, um, I'm going to increase the uh, performance in the control center so you can kind of see what the differences are between performance mode, default, and comfort. And uh, yeah, so without further ado, here comes this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and um, thanks again for the support. Okay guys, so starting off we uh, had control running and I'm going to show that the um, Omen Command Center performance profile is currently, currently set to default. So I'm going to start by recording gameplay on this default profile first and as you can see temperatures are 68 degrees approaching 70 and I've also got MSI Afterburner running in the background just so you guys can still see those uh, temperatures and everything. Alright, up here you see the GPU temperature is 52 degrees and 52 degrees currently at 18% utilization and um, 1215 megahertz. Right now we're using about 2 gigabytes of memory and uh, we haven't even gotten into the game so um, settings that I'm using here are, let's go to display, I've got the settings here and um, I've got DLSS on. Uh, without DLSS on, it, it's really going to be um, not unplayable, but just uh, not as high as the FPS could be if you, had j if you just turn DLSS on. I think it's a good implementation. As you can see, I've got most settings on high, um, or as high as I can get them. I did not turn MSAA on because it severely um, cripples performance, especially if you have all of the ray trace features on. I've got ray tracing set to high, and um, which enables all of these ray traced effects here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and back out of this menu, and we're going to continue where I left off. Fair warning. This is gonna be weirder than usual. Can't be helped. You called me. So here. There's a hole hidden behind that poster that leads to the real world. We all feel safe in that room. But sometimes. Sometimes something crawls out from behind the poster. And the ones that see it happen freak out and try to forget what they saw. I'm here. Why did you bring me here? Hello? Anyone here? So right away, you can probably see that this game is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the ray trace reflections on the floor, um, and you can see the ray trace reflections on the wood grain up at the uh, on the top where the uh, the walls are up there upstairs. Um, and you can see we're sitting at about 76, 78 FPS, using right now just under four gigabytes of uh, memory from the video card. And GPU uh, temps are about 66 degrees, and we're utilizing about 97% of the uh, graphics card. Not too bad if I say so myself. And 
you can see the um, the ray tracing reflections off of the walls. It really, really brings a level of realism and um, not too much of an FPS hit. Also see you know the um, ray traced lighting effects here too as well. And you can see the reflection of the American flag right here. As I moved it, you can see that it's reflecting exactly as it's moving. So pretty neat stuff. So I'm going to go now and change the performance to. The performance profile and see what kind of improvements we yield there. And I'm going to enable Max Fan to keep things as cool as possible. see it's really hasn't um, given too much of a boost. There was a little period where it jumped up to like 95, but that was when it was first loading the scene up. However, up here, when I'm running around, before it was in the 70s, and now you can see it's almost mid-80s. Federal Bureau of Control. All these years I've been looking for them and they were hiding in plain sight. Fantastic job with this game. The lighting, it just looks natural. Um, now, if we turn DLSS off, which I'm going to do. Let's turn DLSS off. And let's go back in game. Well, hold on. I think I may have to. Might have to restart the game in order for that to take effect. But actually, no, I don't. So, anyway, um, that is pretty much what you can expect out of control. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at this scene. I mean, the, the way the light comes out, it naturally fades as it goes further across the room. So, yeah, so that was the first game of the performance test here, which I'm um, very, very pleased with. So I'm going to stop this, and I'm going to exit this game. And we're going to start up another one. I'm going to pause the video just while Gears loads up. This one takes a little bit of time, even loading from an SSD. Okay, so I've gotten Gears started up. And the first thing I'm going to do is go into the in-game benchmark first. And I can, as you can see, that um, even just running the menu for this game um, is going to be using over three and a half gigabytes of video memory. And so you really want to have a strong GPU in order to, um, and a CPU for that matter. The game is well optimized, um, but you still, if you're going to play it with, you know, a lot of the bells and whistles selected, um, to really enjoy the experience, you're going to really want to have a modern um, modern PC. 
So we'll go to extras here and the benchmark. And I have to say that I really, really love what they did with the benchmark in this game. Um, it's a really fairly accurate to what kind of experience you're going to have in game. And as you can see right now, it's on it, and I'm still on the maximum performance profile. So um, you'll, I'll be quiet and let the benchmark speak for itself. As you can see the benchmark is finished and here are the results so as you can see here I've got the GeForce RTX 2070 and they're now calling it um, the max P as in Paul um, instead of the max Q so um, and you see the CPU up here total memory 16 gigs um, I think it did fairly well and this is at the um, 1920 by 1080 um, and I've got everything set to either high or ultra and um, so yeah and I, I really 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 love this uh, summary over here it really lets you see you know kind of what is the limiting factor on your particular machine and um, so I'm pretty happy with the results and as you saw you know we ran probably about five close to six gigabytes of video memory and um, the CPU temperatures still stayed in within reason and it never really gets too terribly hot and you also see that the CPU kind of teeters between 70 and close to 90 degrees now again given the fact that this has a full powered RTX card a six core i7 processor which I actually have clocked to about 4.3 gigahertz um, using throttle stop to maintain the boost clock um, I would say it's the temperatures are not bad at all and um, running max fans through the command center really helps you push the system so I really um, I'm really impressed with how most games on average perform I'm going to pause this recording and I'm going to jump into the next one. So here I've started the Heaven benchmark and I've got all of the settings on and um, so you can see that there. Let's close that. And let's go ahead and actually start the benchmark. Sorry I did not make the MSI Afterburner settings um, a little bit larger um, so that you can see them better. I will try to do that and reposition that for my next video so that it's not uh, in the way of anything and it's visible. So I still consider this a pretty fair benchmark to really test um, one's GPU. As you can see it's got um, kind of pushes the GPU a little bit. Um, right now we're running at about 50%. Now that is mainly because I'm running at 1440p. If I were to bump the resolution up to 4K and run it that way, it would use much more GPU. And so right now um, I'm going to go ahead and let it run through the benchmark, keep an eye on the temperatures on the, of the CPU, as well as the utilization for both the CPU and GPU. I've got to say that it's really not pushing the system that hard, um, but this is just to give you a starting point if you were to just load it up and let the benchmark run as is, well, tweaking a few settings here and there, but, um, so I'll let the rest of the benchmark play out.
as you can see, that was the um, the benchmark. So I know it was a little bit long, but I wanted to actually um, have it run all the way through. I'm not going to save anything. Um, so again, you know, considering how old this benchmark is, the fact that with those settings running, it was kind of running at around between 40 and 60 frames or so, depending on what was in the scene, it actually still does push your PC um, pretty hard, and that's what, that's what you need out of a good benchmark anyway, so um, I'm going to go ahead and quit that. close that and the next thing I'm going to boot up is the Quake 2 RTX demo. Uh, after all, I do have a pow pretty powerful RTX graphics card in this laptop so why not test out another RTX dedicated game. This actually can be downloaded for free on Steam uh, which is what I did so let's go to environment setup change the time setting to evening gonna go to earth we'll leave the, uh, the pad off it just makes it more authentic so graphics options RTX mode is on VSync no FPS counter no I've already got one Resolution scale is 100%. This does come with um, multi GPU support if you have dual graphics cards, like um, a dual RTX 2080 setup or 2080 Ti. Um, let's see. All right, so we've got our settings pretty much the way I want. So I'm going to jump into a game map. And of course, I'm going to put it on easy because I really um, am not that great at, <laughs> at the uh, Quake series games.
set up, um, we set up for a complete competency on. I was going to do Shadow of the Tomb Raider, um, but it's just without having to set the, um, the performance of the game using the um, processes tab and setting it to priori pri high priority, it's like a stuttering mess. And, um, and it doesn't matter what setting I use or anything like that. It's just, it'll go maybe not 85 FPS and stutter. And I just don't want to have to go through that for the benchmark video. Um, I don't want you guys to have to suffer through that either. So I figured I'd go into this game right here. Um, my current settings are as follows. You've got my video. with this screen, it looks phenomenal, even in 1080p. That again, that's another thing that I wanted to mention. These laptops, um, they are made for the newer uh, generation of games. The 1080p of today is more intensive than the 1080p of, say, three or four years ago, um, because their textures are more, you got more high fidelity um, textures and things like that and it really pushes your system uh, pretty hard. So 1080p um, is kind of, and especially with the new ray tracing features coming out, um, along with high definition, high fidelity textures and assets, 1080p is a good, uh, a good resolution plan, not to mention when you're dealing with a 144 or higher refresh rate monitor to get the most out of it. You don't want to be trying to push 4K just yet. That probably would be, you know, four or five years off uh, for now, if not a little bit less, depending on what NVIDIA and AMD, you know, pull out of that hat would be upcoming Ampere series and AMD's um, upcoming rumored uh, NVIDIA killer graphics card. So we'll see. I'll try to cover those as I find out more information, too. So anyway, without further ado, here are some of the... Um, So I basically got it um, pretty much maxed out at 1080p settings. And so let's go into it quickly. So single player. Let's do this. Let's, let's go to it. And I'm, just, I'm not going to do the whole entire race. I'm just going to do enough of it for you to be able to see the performance.
that was a um, kind of an unusual um, video that I'm doing. Um, usually I just do kind of a, a different formatting for these types of videos, but wanted to try try something a little bit different. I know it's probably a little bit longer, um, and I'm sorry for those that wanted Battlefield 5. I just don't have that loaded onto this particular machine yet. Um, but I will, and as soon as I do, I will do some gameplay footage and benchmarks from that. And um, so, yeah, I appreciate you guys in sending your requests in. I hope that you got some knowledge um, as far as the performance and kind of what you can expect. I did not find too much value in changing the um, settings from performance down to down to comfort. Um, I didn't want to have to keep jumping in and out of screens and. Um, you know, kind of just confusing the heck out of people that are watching the video as to what I was doing. And um, I think it kind of distracts from, you know, from the actual benchmark. So that's why I just wanted to keep it in performance mode. Now, one thing that I will do in my next video is I'm going to show settings, you know, um, some gameplay and performance um, when I'm using the throttle stop settings to maintain a higher boost clock and lower temperatures by undervolting the laptop. Um, and I'm also going to show kind of what things are like if you just run it out of the box and, um, and do the performance modes. So I think you guys will enjoy that. Um, but yeah, so I appreciate you guys and I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. So that is my video, um, as long as it might have been, of um, just showing the performance you can expect from the 2019 HP Omen 17 with the RTX 2070 i7-9750H CPU um, and you know all of the latest updates. I am personally impressed with this machine, um, you know, well worth the money I paid for it and you'd actually spend a, probably two or three thousand dollars more to get a comparably spec machine from other competitors. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so that you won't miss any posts or um, videos from me that I come out with in the future. Let me guys let me know what you guys think in the description, in the comment section below. You can uh, follow me on Instagram. Um, I look forward to socializing with everybody there. I can also take feedback there too. So. Um, guys, have a great weekend, and stay tuned for the next one. Bye, guys.